Hello there, people of the internet. How's everyone doing today? I'm doing all right. Thanks for asking. Before we get started, let me go ahead and point out that I hope, I hope Kevin doesn't scream for the entire video. I hope that the people watching this will come to understand the hypocritical satire that this video represents. However, there is a lot of truth that this video represents as well. More often than not, whenever I make a comparison video between two things, I'll have somebody sound off in the comments or send me an email or message my, uh, you, or my uh, Facebook page or Instagram page or something like that. Somebody will message me and ask why or how the hell I could possibly go about uh, comparing two items like I did or am or you know whatever the context is. Like for example, I've uh, before compared an AR-15 to a Ruger Mini-14, uh, two very different platforms, but there's a lot of similarities uh, between them. Uh, I compared them and I got a lot of comments that are, you know, positive and a lot of them are like, how the hell could you do that? They're two very different rifles. Well, today I'm going to uh, go ahead and address that. I'm going to address how the hell I could go about doing something like that. So first off, before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and make this statement that is very bold, but at the same time very, very accurate in my opinion. This right here is basically an entirely opinion-based uh, video, but I'm going to make a lot of really good points. Now my opinion is that you can compare anything to anything. We are not limited by platform or uh, category or anything like that. You can compare, uh, you can compare the car over there to my side by side that I've got right here. Uh, the side by side actually runs and drives and can go over way more terrain than that car over there can. Side by side has an engine. Side by side is green. That car is white. I feel comfortable firing at that car. I would not feel comfortable firing at my side-by-side -side because I like my side-by-side. -side. There, I just compared the two. Two very different things, but hey, I just compared them. Now, it would not be a day at the range if uh, we didn't have some wind coming through to completely mess up my audio. Uh, it would not be a day at the range if I did not show off some firearms. So today, for comparison's sake, I chose a couple of firearms that are like completely in other categories from one another and we're going to compare them if this is something that would irritate you then leave this is not the place for you all right so for today's sake of comparison we are going to be comparing this buck bb gun my literal first gun i got this gun a whole lot of years ago we're comparing that bb gun to my omnimax ar-15 to my star bm nine millimeter now as i said these are very 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 different guns that fall in very 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 different categories but hey we're going to compare them because yes you can compare anything to anything and if you're going to complain about a comparison to something then you're just the type of person to complain about non-essential bullshit now don't get me wrong there's a lot of really valid points that people make out there whenever people are comparing one thing to another. Like if you're comparing a 30 out 6 to a 22, of course the 30 out 6 is going to do better. My problem does not lay with that. My problem lays with the type of people that say you can't compare one thing to another because you can compare anything to anything. Maybe not, you know, a comparison to get scientific data or a reputable or a reputable uh, level of feedback but you can compare anything to anything like I made a versus video one of my more popular videos which I was not expecting of uh, an 8 millimeter Mauser versus a 30 out 6 but using Inkari KKL stock Mauser versus a Savage Axis 30 out 6 with a polymer stock which was a lot lighter 
Uh, so of course the recoil was more. I was using cheap steel case uh, uh, 30-06 ammo versus uh, military ball ammunition for the 8mm Mauser. So of course we had a lot of uh, different factors that played into that, but there were people complaining about the fact that I couldn't compare this to that because they're two different things. And to that I say bullshit. I can compare anything to anything. Let's compare, I see a flower right there, let's compare the flower to that box of wolf ammo that I have sitting on my shooting uh, chair right here. They both have yellow on them. The flower is alive, the box of ammunition is not. The box of ammunition holds ammunition, the flower does not. The flower gr grows in the dirt, the box of ammunition is created at a factory. There, I just compared them. I compared, you know, the way they look. I compared their, you know, type of manufacture, I guess, if you can count growing a plant as manufacturing a plant. Anyway, I'm sure that you guys get my point. My point is you can compare anything to anything. So let's get right down to the comparison. Right now, the Buck BB gun right here. Uh, this is a very common uh, item used for teaching typically younger children, younger students, uh, how to properly and safely operate a firearm. In this particular case, this is the only gun I have here that is not semi-automatic. It is lever action, I guess. <laughs> This gun is tube-fed, and it does not have an external magazine, unlike our other two weapons. The amount of ammunition that this rifle holds, well, it's not really a rifle, it's a, it's a BB gun, but the amount of ammunition that this thing holds far, far surpasses the ammunition that these other uh, guns hold. I won't even say firearms, I'm just going to say guns, because they're all technically guns. Maybe not by a legal standpoint, but this is a BB gun, you know? These other firearms are guns, technically speaking. They launch a projectile. This BB gun launches projectiles based off of air pressure. A lot of your BB guns operate off of air pressure or spring tension rather than an actual propellant like uh, black powder or smokeless powder firearms. One thing I will say about this BB gun is not only is it very, very cheap and readily available and even, you know, available to buy in California, I think, but you don't need an FFL to get your hands on one of these. You don't need to wait a waiting period to get your hands on one of these. In fact, this is one of those items that you can just buy off the internet and have it shipped to your house, which is pretty damn awesome, I won't lie. Now the BB gun does not have a finish on it, it's just kind of painted black and it's got this cheap wood stock that many years ago I put a bolt into, but other than that, it's a gun that fires a projectile. One thing I will say about this BB gun is I do really like the sights on it. <laughs> Tell you what, the trigger's not good on it though. I think I hit it. This BB gun is like, I don't know, 15 years old at this point. I'm surprised it works at all. Well, I can hear the projectile firing down there, but I can't tell where it's going. So one thing I will say is the BB gun is woefully uh, inaccurate compared to the other firearms. Up next, we're going to compare the Star BM to these other firearms. The BB gun has a stock. The AR-15 has a stock. This Star BM does not have a stock. This Star BM fires 9mm Parabellum rounds. In this particular case, the ammunition I have is uh, Wolf ammunition, is 115 grain steel case ammo, nothing real special, just the ball ammunition. Uh, the projectiles fired by this, unlike the BB gun, are fired based off of a propellant, in this case, smokeless powder. Just like the BB gun, this right here is an all steel frame or an all metal frame. I'm not entirely sure if the BB gun is made of steel or not, but it is an all metal frame. Uh, the BB gun holds way more ammunition than this thing right here. However, the 9mm Parabellum round is far more potent than the little 177 caliber BBs that uh, my BB gun fires. Unlike the BB gun, you need, at least in the United States, to get this shipped off to an FFL. This right here does legally count as a firearm. However, the beauty about external magazines is uh, that is pretty customizable. I'm sure somebody somewhere at some point in time has made an extended magazine for at least some sort of 9mm uh, variant of the 1911 
that maybe could be used in this thing, perhaps. But the standard issue is seven to eight rounds, depending on the magazine that you get, depending on uh, how loose the tolerances are. This particular one I have is a seven round magazine, so we're gonna go ahead and fire seven rounds down range. Now just like with the BB gun, except in this case it is more so my fault, I'm not that accurate with uh, handguns. I'm pretty much not that accurate with anything that doesn't have a stock on it, but I feel like I can do better than that. Hold on. Alright, so I did manage to uh, cram 8 rounds into this magazine, but I had to really force that 8 one in there. But hey, I got 8 rounds in the magazine. Well, for wolf ammo at 50 yards, that's not bad. All right, up next, let's uh, throw the AR-15 into this mix. This AR-15 is the only firearm I have here that has a polymer receiver. A lot of people don't like the polymer receiver. I don't care. This uh, AR-15 is the only firearm I have out here that has easily removable sights. Uh, the pistol that I brought out, the Star BM, has an actual slide on it. This does not. This has a bolt as a result. Uh, the pistol that I have has a slide release. This AR-15 has a bolt release. However, the BB gun has neither. Uh, the Star BM, good luck finding extended mags for that. However, you can pick up extended mags for this AR-15 pretty easily. There is no extended magazine or anything like that uh, for the BB gun, though. It's one of the bigger problems with... Uh, I guess I would call that tube fed. Uh, uh, would it be tube fed? I don't know. We're, we're just going to say tube fed, although it's more like barrel shroud fed for the BB gun. Anyway, this right here is by far the most powerful and most potent round that we're going to be firing today. The 223 55 grain ball ammunition. This is nothing more than uh, some tool ammo that I got, you know, just some cheap surplus stuff, so nothing special, but I definitely rather have it than the BB gun. Alright, I got one of these old GI AR-15 magazines. This one's seen better days, but let's see uh, if it decides to work proper. Very to feed. I'm not surprised on that. This mag has definitely seen better days. We'll go ahead and blast through these last two rounds. I'm pretty sure it loaded there. There we go, that's better. Now unlike the BB gun, the Star BM and the AR-15 will heat up pretty rapidly uh, while firing, so you gotta keep that in mind. You can sit there and fire the BB gun all day long, it's not gonna heat up. Now unlike the BB gun and the Star BM, uh, the AR-15 over the ejection port does have a dust cover. The BB gun does not have an ejection port because there are no spent shell casings uh, upon firing. So. You don't really have to worry about any brass flying anywhere, just the projectile BBs. In a lot of cases, I could absolutely see how the BB gun would be uh, the more predominant thing to have, or at least an air-propelled projectile rifle. Not only would something like that make the fire rate ludicrously high, but the complexity of the machine would also be very low. The odds of it jamming or locking up would also be very, very low. I mean, it's an interesting concept to think uh, how well something like this would work for like an aircraft gun. Not as well as say a belt fed machine gun that operates on smokeless powder. However, that belt fed machine gun would be pretty damn useless if it jams up because in an aircraft, you can't really get out of your aircraft to unjam that machine gun. Now, with modern practices, you know, today, uh, we don't really have to worry about that problem in our aircraft machine guns. However, back in like World War II, 
oh, that was a serious issue. If you had some uh, air-propelled projectile guns, it would make jamming a lot less frequent. Although the projectiles would be a little less uh, deadly, I still feel like they would be deadly enough to pierce the sheet metal of an aircraft to do enough damage to get it to go down. In fact, that sounds like it would be an interesting test. Maybe I'll get myself one of those uh, 45 caliber, maybe 32 caliber, uh, uh, 35 caliber. I think I actually know someone who has one of those, one of those uh, air rifles. That's a legitimate air rifle and not just a BB gun. And we'll go ahead and see how powerful that is. So that'll be an upcoming video. Another good comparison that I'd like to make, uh, the AR-15 and the 9mm, uh, their effectiveness is based off of the ammunition that they use. However, the BB gun that I have, it creates its own propellant, which is, in this case, compressed air. Or hell, it might be a uh, spring tension for all I know. Uh, the point is, it creates its own uh, propellant, its own self-tensioning system. Now, why do I bring that up? Well, if you want your AR-15 to uh, fire a little uh, faster projectile, you just get yourself a little hotter ammo and you don't have to go about swapping guns. Same thing with the 9mm. You can't really do that with your uh, BB gun without making any real modifications to the gun itself. Alright, now that being said, I know this is like ludicrously off topic, but I have a sofa out on my gun range and I want to shoot it. <laughs> I mean, if you had the opportunity to shoot a sofa on your gun range, wouldn't you take that up? I know I would. So that being the case, I have... Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and just like shoot it with everything I've got out here and we'll compare the damage because why not? I wasn't just going to like let it up with my AR-15, but I may as well, you know, keep the comparison genre going. So I'm going to walk a little closer to hit it with my BB gun because I don't think that anything would happen at this distance with the BB gun. Alright, so even at point blank range, all the, BB get, all the BB gun did was bounce off the fabric of the sofa, which is what I was expecting. That being said, let's step it up to the 9mm. I'm going to go ahead and try to hit the side of the sofa, see if I can get some rounds to travel through the armrest. That'd be pretty cool. All right, let's go have a look at that sofa. You know, back whenever I was uh, using this sofa, I knew that one day I'd be shooting it. And I gotta tell you, I'm not disappointed. So the nine millimeter rounds went straight through this area right here. Oh yeah, we did manage to hit the armrest. All right, cool. Although this right here is like just fabric. I was trying to aim a little lower, see if we could get some rounds to come through the bed area, but I don't really see anything that made it through. So let's go ahead and light it up with the AR-15 a bit, and we will see what we can uh, get this thing to do. Whenever I light it up with the AR, definitely going to be aiming for the guts and internals. I might do a few rounds up here just to see what happens, but that right there is going to be the main uh, target. There's our entry. Exit, entry, and exit right there. I know I said there's our entry, but that's wrong. Let's go see the entry. All right, well, uh, the entries are kind of hard to find. We got one, two, three, four, five right there. Yeah, they're, they're kind of difficult to really see. Uh, so, so much for that idea. All right, well, before, we, uh, before the wind picks up too much again, let me go ahead and lob 10 rounds of 223 of that sofa, because why the hell not? Let's go look at that. I tried uh, spacing it out a decent amount, so maybe we hit something pretty cool in there. All right, well, right off the bat, I do see several exit wounds. Looks like we managed to hit our actual cushion right here. Looks like we hit it a couple of times. That's pretty cool. Uh, I don't really see anything worth noting. It would be cool if we like hit the metal frame in there somewhere, but I don't see that either. Looks like the sofa got lucky and, 
you know, manage to not get hit. So let's go ahead and try that again with, you know, a lot more bullets. I was just walking through and hey, look, wild raspberries and blackberries. These grow all over the place out here. All right, this is my last 20 rounds of 223 that I brought out here for this video. I'm pretty much just going to, uh, not necessarily mag dump because I am going to be like spreading out as much as I can. So it's not going to be that fast rate of fire, but I'm just going to light that thing up. Why is that so jiggly? I'm just going to light that thing up and we're going to see uh, if we can manage to hit that metal frame. Smell the gun oil burning off of this thing. You can smell the freedom. All right, this time we managed to get a lot more hits. Let's see if we managed to hit that metal any. I don't really feel comfortable touching this old carpet. Get that out of the way. All right, now looking in here, what kind of hits do we have? I see, I see, man, it's hard to see in there. I see one right there. I think that's two right there. Well, despite how much we lit it up, looks like we only hit it like twice. Maybe three times. I'm not sure if that's a round hit right there or not. Either way, it was still a good ass time. What I'm going to do next is there is no mattress in there. I'm just going to like fill it with a bunch of rocks and see if we can get some shrapnel damage on the car. But that'll be another episode. Look, we got a little case or a little bit of a bullet jacket right there. So that's pretty cool. It means we had something fragment on the inside. All right, well, I know we got a little off topic here, but God damn it, I wanted to shoot at that sofa. So I did, and I figured I'd go ahead and record it while I did that. I'm going to make a whole uh, episode on me just like blasting the absolute hell out of that sofa. However, that will probably be another day. For right now, I think I've made my point across with this video on how you can compare anything to anything. Uh, not necessarily getting, you know, valid results from it, but you can compare anything to anything. All right, well, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, do me a favor, like the video down below. That definitely helps out. Uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, because I do stuff like this all the time, go ahead and mash that subscribe button. Uh, that ought to be a lot of fun. If you subscribe, then welcome on board. I'm glad to have you. YouTube is getting progressively anti-gun, so just in case something happens to this gun channel, while it's still young, I decided to go ahead and make a secondary channel, kind of like a fallback channel or... Hell, kind of like a camouflage channel. Uh, go ahead and check the link down below. Uh, it's basically just like a gameplay channel. I get drunk, I play video games, I stick it up on YouTube. This way I have something to fall back on in case something happens to this channel. It's pretty fun, I won't lie. Uh, actually, I get drunk and play video games anyway, so I figured I may as well get around to recording it and just throw it up that way if something does happen to this channel anyone who wants to continue to see me you know i will have that fallback channel and that fallback channel will turn into a gun channel if something happens to this channel so if you want to support this channel and any uh, future issues that might pop up from all this tyrannical nonsense that we're dealing with right now uh, subscribe to that channel as well that being said check on the patreon page i've started doing q a's on it I get a lot of repeat questions, a lot of interesting questions, uh, rather than like answer them all uh, one by one. I just started doing Q&As. You don't have to be a Patreon to check that out or ask questions. All right, well, that being said, the wind is picking up like a lot. I have no idea how well the audio is going to be on this video. Hopefully it's not that bad, but I do have some 9mm left. I'm going to go ahead and save it though, just because with the global crisis we got going on right now, there's no guarantee I'll be able to find it again anytime soon. So I'm going to go ahead and save what's left in that box. I think it's still like half a box, despite the fact I got like a thousand rounds left of it. But still, I'm, I'm going to be as nitpicky as possible for right now. All right, well, I am going to go grab myself something to eat because I am hungry. I'm also thirsty. Is it too early to drink beer? What time is it? Like noon? 12.30? Kevin says it's 5 o'clock somewhere, so I'm going to go grab me a beer. You guys go off. Have a fantastic day.
I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.